Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the two new operators that come with the Red Crow operation for Rainbow Six Siege. This is the fourth expansion for the game and these two operators won't be the last as Ubisoft has announced another season of content. If you'd like to learn more about this expansion, be sure to check the link in the video description. Now Operation Red Crow features two new Japanese operators. We have Hibana on the attacker side and then we have Echo for the defenders. Hibana comes with the Excaros launcher that can be used as basically a ranged device for punching holes in walls. And not just walls, but it can also punch through reinforced walls, making her the second operator of being able to take down reinforced walls in addition to thermite. One volley from this grenade launcher will make a hole big enough to shoot through, and two volleys will make a hole big enough to actually move through. And after the explosive pellets have stuck themselves to a wall, they won't detonate until you actually press the detonation button. This allows you to actually stick them to multiple walls and have multiple breaches at the exact same time. It can be used as a distracting device just as much as it can as a breaching device. For primary weapons, she has the option between the Type 89 Assault Rifle, which does about 41 damage per shot and has a 20 round magazine, very similar to something like the SCAR, and then she also has the option of switching to the Supernova shotgun. For sidearms, both operators have the option between the P229 semi-automatic handgun, which does good damage per shot, or the Bearing 9 submachine gun, which is basically just a hyped up Uzi, and it actually looks pretty cool. And for gadgets, she can choose between a stun grenade or claymore. Now for a long time, Thermite has been an incredibly important operator because he is the only one with the ability to break through reinforced walls. So it would give defensive teams a huge advantage if they're able to take out the enemy team's Thermite and they had a good reinforced defense system set up. Well, Hibana now offers a secondary choice to break through reinforced walls. If you're playing on a map where you know reinforced walls are going to be a big issue, it might make sense to pick both Hibana and Thermite. However, just like Thermite, Hibana's ability can be disrupted by signal jammers, and uh, once you fired her explosive pellets onto the wall, she cannot reclaim them, so you have to take out that signal jammer or your shots are pretty much lost. In addition to which, your shot placement on a wall is very important. If they're not placed close enough to each other, the hole you make might not be big enough to get through as it'll leave small amounts of debris behind. Uh, I ran into this issue when trying to enter the garage here and uh, it was kind of disappointing because I was like, oh man, this would have been a great breach point. I would have had this issue with thermite, so it's a little bit of a learning curve and you just have to make sure your shots are placed perfectly. Now, if you shoot this grenade launcher against a wall that is not reinforced, the enemy can fire through the wall taking out uh, the different explosive pellets. There's six of them, so uh, they might not get them all, but getting a few of them will create enough of a disruption so that you won't be able to make a hole big enough to fit through. That being said, it'll still create sight lines in order for you to shoot somebody through the wall. Now, because she only has three volleys of grenades, she cannot create two entry points. So you can create one entry point and then one hole in the wall to shoot through, or she can create three holes in the wall. This makes her a little bit underwhelming when compared to Thermite's breaching ability, but again, she's kind of like a hybrid character. She has some of the abilities that Ash has with her grenade launcher and the breaching ability that Thermite has for getting through those reinforced walls. So if you can't make up your mind between Thermite and Ash, you might want to pick Hibana. Now, when it comes to defense, Echo's an interesting choice as he offers a, an interesting hybrid between Intel and Distraction. His ability, Yokai, is a hovering drone that allows him to send a sonic burst at enemies to completely disorient them. And I've been hit by this a few times while playing and it absolutely disorients and fuzzes up your screen. You can kind of notice movements and shadows and stuff like that. So maybe you can defend yourself, but it's certainly not an ideal situation to get into a firefight when your screen is that messed up. The drone itself moves around on the floor, but if you want to fire off its sonic burst, you have to put it in defensive mode, which basically sticks it to the ceiling. So you hit a button and it pops up to the ceiling and and then basically you sit there and wait for somebody to walk underneath. It's a pretty fun and effective technique, though I will say it makes a pretty distinct humming sound. So an experienced operator may be able to hear the sound and figure out where it is before they get disoriented. Then again, it's still a good tool for Intel. So if somebody gets distracted,
distracted trying to take out your drone, it might give you the perfect opportunity to peek around a corner and take them out. Now you can also use it just purely as a drone driving around to give you intel. It's the only defensive drone that's in the game at the moment. One downside though is that I haven't been able to spot enemies while using this drone, so you'll have to use voice comms to relay where the enemy position is. For weapons, he comes with the MP5 SD, and I'm really excited that they finally put the MP5 into the game. It's such an iconic SMG. The MP5 SD comes with pretty much a permanently affixed suppressor. So basically, you're running with a suppressed weapon, whether you'd like to or not. Because of this, you have to forfeit other barrel attachments like muzzle brake and flash hider, and the overall damage per shot isn't particularly high with this gun, so you really have to go for headshots. This can, however, pose a bit of a problem when you're going up against operators like Blackbeard, and headshots are not an option. For gadgets, he has the option to choose between barbed wire and a shield. I like him, he's a fun defensive operator, and the intel he gets from his drone is very, very valuable. Even though you can't share it directly with your teammates, you're actually gonna have to yell at them over voice comm. Overall, I'm enjoying the new tactical nuances brought by these two new operators, and I'm gonna have to sink a lot more hours in before I really understand their full potential. I hope this video serves as a good starting guide for the two new operators. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.